Hello, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Fibonacci numbers. Now, the Fibonacci numbers are named after a guy named Leonardo Fibonacci, who was an Italian mathematician. He lived between the years of 1170 and 1250 AD, and he brought the sequence to the, rest, to the West from Saudi Arabia, the, the Arab world. And that's not the only thing he did. While he was over in the Arab world, he discovered the idea of place values that used Arabic numerals, which we use today. Um, and he, he wrote a book on this and published it in Europe, and it persuaded the guys in Europe to, set, to convert from those Roman numerals that are impossible to add and multiply, divide, subtract, all that. It's almost impossible to do that in Roman numerals because they don't have place value. So, he was able to convince Europe to use place values, which is just really cool. And the book he wrote was called Liber Abaci, and so that's really amazing. But he also brought the sequence to, um, to Europe, and it starts, here's what we're going to talk about today, and it starts with zero, and zero is more, is less of a number in the equation, in, or in the sequence, than it is sort of a block that it runs off. You know, runners, they use a block to start the race, they push off the blocks, and zero acts, zero, this, this zero acts like that. It's the block that the sequence pushes off. You don't have a good race if people don't use blocks to start off. Everyone's a lot slower. And then one is sort of like this, but not quite. And then you have one. That's just, you need to put the third, do one. And then you add these two together, zero and one, to get another one. Add these two together, two, and these two together to get the next one is three, and this is how you go through the entire thing. You just add the, the two, the first two and the, the, the most recent two together, you get the next one. Two, three, five, eight, and so on. Now, here's the thing with the Fibonacci sequence. It's cool and all, it's something to do when you're bored or something, but there is something deeper in here that you can, you can calculate. It's, uh, it's, it's a irrational number, so you don't actually calculate it yourself. You approach it, but you can find bits of phi, which is this irrational number that we're talking about. Now, this is irrational, so you cannot calculate it using these numbers because it's irrational by definition, you cannot get an irrational number, you cannot get an irrational number by using a ratio. And you may say, oh, but, you know, pi is circumference over diameter. Yes, but circumference and diameter are variables, and you can never get a perfect measurement of this, and it's, I mean, if circumference is pi and diameter is one, but, circum but since pi is infinite, it never repeats. You can never draw a line that's pi long because it's you, there's always that like point zero 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 three five nine two five eight that is that you have to add and it's impossible. But uh, back to phi. Phi can be approached. You can't actually get it. Can be approached by uh, dividing the uh, two two pairs of Fibonacci numbers. So we'll start with um, one, wait, no, we can't do this. One over zero does not work, so don't do that. Can't divide by zero. But what we can do is one divided by one. And that equals one. Um, so then you take the other one, 2 divided by 1. That equals 2. So we now know that we are somewhere between 1 and 2 when we do this. Now, where did I put here? now we move on to the next one, 3 divided by 2. 1.5. Then we do 5 over 3. 1.6 repeating. That's a 6. Let 
let me rewrite these so I don't forget. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. There we go. There's a bit more. Okay. So we're at, uh, done that, 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 that. Okay, eight and five. Eight and five. Feel bad, it's late. That's a 1.6. So we now know it's between 1.6 and 1.6666666666 and so on. Okay, done 5 and 8. Okay, 13 and 8. 13 eighths equals 1.6. That's the 6. 2, 5. And so, now we will finally go to 21 over 13, which equals, no, let's, okay, which is, okay, that's not an equal sign, it's approximate, 1.6153. So this is, um, you keep on getting closer and closer, you sort of go from, so if, let's write a number line, it's between 1 and 2, and phi, I happen to know, is about right here. You just go sort of back and forth through as you get closer and closer and closer and closer until you get to phi, but you never do because it's irrational. It's, yeah, it's so fun, but you, you just keep going back and forth and back and forth, you sort of center around phi, and you get closer and closer and closer. Like, right now, we got three digits of phi, I believe. Yep, we got one, the six, and the one, 1.61. 1. Now, phi is really 1.618. Oh, three. And it, and it goes on, it's 1.618039887, and so on. Um, but that is just you know, a small part, because it's irrational. It's like trying to, you know, pi is 3.14159. So, yeah, that's, I'm going to show, this is actually one of the coolest ratios ever, in my opinion. Because... Uh, because it appears so often in nature, and it's the one number, if I could point to the, point to one number, I would point to this, is what number shows that math is beauty. And I would point to this one, because this mathematical con con constant, irrational number, might be a constant, this irrational number is literally programmed into our brains. Your face, for example, let's have a little face, shall we? That's a little face. His eyes are off, so I don't want that. Let's have a better face. There we go. Okay, that's a P, but it looks more like a P or something. But, okay, so let's say we draw a little line right across. It's literally programmed into our body. Let's call this B. That's hard. This, this, right, this little line here, from the eyes to the top of the head, that's B. Eyes to the bottom of the head, that's A. A over B is approximately equal to phi. Because it's just, it's a natural phenomenon. And I can, let's see, click on this little C symbol to go to one of Vihart's, I believe, three videos on phi and how it appears in nature all over the place. She's a lot better at this than I am, I'm just starting off. But that, it's just incredible how many places this thing crops up, pops up. And so that's just, it's just the coolest thing ever. Our brains real have this thing in our brain, in our head, and it says, that's beautiful. We like it when things have a ratio of 1.6.803. So, we use it. So, um, 
And because of this, people have learned this. Like, big corporations, they know this. So, I believe the Nissan logo for sure has um, Phi in it. Look up more of it, but, um, oh, how could I forget? This right here, the Apple logo uses it a bit. It uses um, Fibonacci Spiral and it uses Phi as well, a bit. I don't know, I forget quite how it does it, because it's such a complicated process, how they did it. It was incredible, but like, this little, like they cut out this, this little circle that they've bitten out. Can you see that? Little circle they've bitten out. That had this like, that has um, like an area, like the circle is really just C, it's got like a, comparatively, it's got a Fibonacci number, a radius. And then this is also created by like a, uh, what's it called, a Venn diagram, this little thing. And there's also another circle cut out here. And there's like Fibonacci everywhere. It's everywhere you look. And if you want to know more about what the Fibonacci style, which I just talked to you about, about in this Apple logo, I'm not going to show you how Apple did it because that's so complicated. Unlike their, unlike their devices, which are incredibly simple and why I use them. Um, it's very, it's a very complicated logo, but I'm just going to show you how to use a normal Fibonacci spiral and how to make it, because it appears in, like, Nautilus shells, those little, you know, little shells are like, you know, it's like, and you've got a little, little tentacles coming out, you know, these guys, those guys are, um, those guys, this spiral is actually a Fibonacci spiral if you draw it, if it's, a real one. This is fake. I don't think that's Fibonacci spiral. But, you know, these little shells, those are Fibonacci spirals. Everything revolves around Fibonacci. It's like, if I had to describe to an alien one word that could uh, describe life on Earth, I'd probably use phi, because that is a ratio that is used absolutely everywhere, and it's just incredible. So if you want to learn more about how to make a Fibonacci spiral like this, uh, I will... I'm going to put an annotation on my little friend here, little Nautilus shell. Click on him, and you will be taken to my video, How to Make This, the Fibonacci Spiral. I will see you there.